Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Anoki Uncensored Show. I'm your host, Raj Gurn, the founder of the umbrella brand, Anoki Life. I am super thrilled to be speaking with this gorgeous woman that you see on the screen next to me today. She is actress Emily Sharp. She's the daughter of a prominent producer, Prashant Shah, known for many films, but films that you would know are ones like My Name is Khan in Bollywood, starring Shah Rukh Khan and Kajol, and Speed Kills in Hollywood, which stars John Travolta. Before we say hello, I want to tell you a little bit about why I'm speaking to Emily today. She is releasing a film called Jungle Cry, which is a film that is really important for many reasons. And I want to really just dive into the conversation with her. She, by the way, she executive produced this and she's also starring in the film. So without further ado, Emily, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I want to get started by just deep diving um, just why you decided to do this film. Like Jungle Cry is based on a true story. And I want to kind of know a little bit about what it was about the story that just really kind of intrigued and encapsulated you wanting to kind of do it. Sure. We actually had two scripts that we were choosing from um, when we were thinking about producing and kind of having my big Bollywood and Hollywood debut. And I was coming on as an EP for either of the um, stories, but we were given the option of getting the rights for Shersha, which was given to us by Shabir Boxwala or uh, Jungle Cry. And Shersha, obviously, everybody knows did so well and it's gotten a lot of recognition and awards for obvious reasons, being that it was based on a true story of a war hero. But the reason why I chose Jungle Cry was because um, I just, not that I think that one story is more important the, than others, but I do have a very close connection to children. And I always want to highlight stories of unsung heroes, especially when it comes from underprivileged children. And so to me, that was more important than anything else. Um, Absolutely. So that's why we kind of went with the path of choosing Jungle Cry. And especially because back in 2007, India had won the World Cricket Cup. And these boys that won the World, World Rugby Junior Cup had never gotten that recognition or any media attention for that matter. So, you know, coming from America, I thought, okay, maybe I don't know anything about it because Americans don't really follow rugby and I'm not living in India, but maybe people in India know about it. And to my surprise, nobody in India, not even people that are from Odisha or from even Gulf which is a larger city close to Odisha had ever heard of this story. So I knew in that moment that what we were doing was almost like a social responsibility to bring light to these boys in their story. Absolutely. And I definitely want to talk more about that. But before we get into that, I'm really intrigued about one thing. You're acting in it and you're also executive producing it. Tell me why you decided to take on both those roles for this particular film. You know, I when I read the script, I realized that there was there was a few essences that were lacking, but one of them was the fact that there was not a single female character. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to come on as an EP to any script that I was going to be a part of. So that way I can be involved in the creative process um, as I do have a background in a little bit of writing. And then I grew up in it with a producer being my father. So um, I wanted, you know, my father is very great at physical production. So my strength is on the creative side. And so I wanted to be able to contribute in that way, shape and form. And, um, you know, we added the character of Roshni Tucker, who is based on a sports physio out in the U.S. Her name is Borby Desai. Um, and then we, you know, we added the Bennett family, which is where the boys come and they stay with them. And so um, we were able to add these like little elements that weren't in the script initially. And so then I came on as that EP to kind of mend the script a little bit. And then also part of the editing process, as well as a lot of the subtitling is actually done by me. So I speak Hindi and I speak Gujarati as well. So I was able to obviously understand the language and understand how to properly translate that for the Western world. Mm hmm. You know, it's really interesting. I wanted to also ask you um, from a casting perspective, um, the casting is very interesting. Were you involved in that or, you know, was there some sort of an ideology behind who you wanted for the various different roles? Yeah, actually, I, you know, we actually had Abe first on our list. And the reason being is because anytime you watch any of Abe's films, you know that you're going to watch a good story. You know that no matter what, he's so choosy in what he does. And that's for obvious reasons. I mean, you watch his work and you'll notice that he picks those scripts for a reason. Even the one, you know, big commercial masala film that he did, the Zindagina Milige Tubara, that was still mm -hmm. such a good story. So 
I knew if we brought him on, then people or the audience and his fan following would come. And he kind of has like a cult following, I would say. People who like yeah. they really, really like him and they follow his work closely. So I knew that, you know, not only would we get that, those eyeball views, but we would also get the people who know that he is a very well-respected actor to come and watch it and say, okay, he's attached to a good script or a good story. So let's watch it for that reason. And I do think that we're seeing a lot of the, that change happening in content where you're not really seeing these like larger than life or these massive A-list celebrities or big actors doing that well anymore when it comes to box office numbers. You're seeing, or viewing numbers for that matter, when it comes to OTT, mm. you're seeing good stories do really well. So I'm sure you know of Money Heist and Squid Games, like yes. those stories, even though we can't understand what they're saying and we're only reading subtitles and watching facial expressions and the movement of these actors, we still really are deeply connected and are following. And now these stories have blown up because of the fact that the story is so good. So we wanted to really focus on the fact that we are coming out with a good story and it doesn't matter who, what name is attached. We're, you know, we're not trying to be this massive commercial film. We want good, solid actors. So even Atul mm -hmm. Kumar, who plays Dr. Samantha, he is a really well-respected theater actor in India. And he does a lot of, you know, OTT stuff and, um, well-developed stories as well, just like up. Hey, so, you know, we were quite mindful in who we casted and how we casted them. And we also wanted them to be a good representation of the actual characters in the story. Absolutely. And do you feel that you accomplished that? I do. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe I'm biased, but <laughs> you'll have to see. And at the end, we do show the original characters from uh, the Kalinga mm -hmm. Institute of Social Sciences, as well as Paul Walsh, who was part of the rugby or the uh, Jungle Crows and Kalo India Association. So you, you get to see those characters and kind of how they behave and how they are with kids and um, what their role is in India. And then obviously you can relate that to the film that you just watched. So, yeah, I do think the casting was pretty spot on. Absolutely. You know, I have to say that as well. There, there were so many moments of emotionality that you felt, you know, with the story and, um, yeah. you know, without giving away, you know, a lot <laughs> of the story, I, I want to kind of maybe focus a little bit on your character. But before I do that, Emily, for those people who don't know your journey, I'd love for you to share a little bit about just kind of all the things that you've done in terms of preparing yourself with the skills and, you know, the repertoire that you have you've gone to like a gazillion schools <laughs> dancing um you know active training mm -hmm. media entertainment everything mm -hmm. i'd love for you to share a little bit about that because mm -hmm. i feel the eclecticism of that really lends to kind of how i feel that you approach projects from an outsider looking in yeah yeah i mean listen i you know i started off I, I joke because I say that I was dancing before I could walk, but I will say that my parents put me in a lot of classes when I was at a young age and I'm very grateful and I don't take that for granted because I know that every kid doesn't get that opportunity, but they were able to kind of recognize that I had this affinity for performing and for being on stage and um, even acting and I was very expressive at a very, very young age. So. Yeah, I would, you know, dance in my living room and I would act in, you know, my living room with my sister and my parents and things like that. And so I think that they kind of just realized, OK, this girl has this energy to be on stage or be in front of the camera and like we should really push her to pursue this. So they put me in acting classes or, you know, dance classes first. And then when I could actually talk properly, they put me in acting classes. And one summer they dropped me and my sister off to India in Juhu Beach. And we were training with Madhumati for the entire summer in Bollywood dancing and acting. And kind of just, you know, I fell in love with the whole idea of being part of Bollywood, but also just acting. And then every single summer after that, they put me in Lee Strasberg acting school between Los Angeles and New York. Um, you know, they invested a lot of obviously time and money into my career and my skills. And I think that it's because of them that I'm where I am today, because I have all those tools in my toolbox from every single acting class and, you know, um, theater performance that I've ever done. Like I was part of a theater uh, performance group out of the East Coast between New Jersey and New York growing up from the age of, I want to say about seven to 18 um, I became a dance teacher as well. I was doing theater in school. Um, you know, I, I just really grew up with it. And then I obviously went to college because that, you know, you can't be Indian and not get a degree. So I went to college <laughs> and I studied entertainment, media, marketing and management. And so I studied the entertainment and business or sorry, the business side of entertainment. Um, and then right after, you know, between college and after college, I was working on production sets. So my dad was like, you need to learn what's going on behind the camera before you get in front of the camera and learn to respect a production before you become an actress. 
And so I worked on Fast and Furious on with the stunt mm-hmm. team. And then I was a personal assistant to Spiro Rosados on Fast and Furious as well. And, and Marvel, Captain America, uh, as well as Monster Trucks, which was a universal picture. So I worked, you know, as closely with him. And then I also worked with Clint Eastwood on Jersey Boy. So I was part of his director's team. Um, and so, yeah, mm-hmm. I did have that kind of experience behind the camera and understanding, you know, my favorite type of genre is action. And I always wanted to be, instead of, you know, we have James Bond, but why can't we have Jamie Bond, you know? So I always <laughs> wanted to have that like femme fit all type of, you know, film where it's just fun and exciting and that type of franchise. So um, I wanted to really, really learn what stunts were like and what, you know, an mm-hmm. action film kind of entailed and so that's why I chose the films that I did to work on behind the camera. Absolutely you know I'd love to ask you because you have such a varied skill set what do you feel is the advantage of people out there who you know a lot of people feel that they just need to you know get loads of social media following and they can just (laughs) go out there and do that you know do this do what Mm. you do. What would you say to people like that? I, I really want to hear it from someone like you, just because you are so accomplished in your skill set and you nice. did it for so many decades. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it, it shows. The film it is very high quality. It's an Thank incredible you. story. It's very well weaved. The characters are very strong and it's very, very yeah. relatable, you know? Yeah. So that absolutely. doesn't just come from nowhere, especially as an executive producer yeah. that's also in the film. Like, yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. You know, I, it's funny, my, my boyfriend always says this and I guess I'll repeat it, but he's, he's a big, um, he's into physics. He went to the university of Toronto to study neuroscience. So he's all into science and math and stuff, but he always says it's literally the law of physics where let's say you take something, a a bowl of soup and you heat it up in the microwave, it cools down quicker than you heating it up over a pan. And it's literally because whatever comes fast goes fast in that same manner. It's, it's the law of physics. So I think that when you invest Invest that kind of time and energy, whether you believe in energy or not. But it, again, it is it is science. So if you invest that time and that energy into something that you love and something that you want to succeed in, it's there is something that is going to be shown for it because energy is never destroyed. It's just you know it's created and then it's it's dispersed. So that energy will come back to you, but you do have to put in that time because if you're just looking for a quick, you know, 15 seconds of fame, that's going to come and go really fast. And yeah, social media is great and it's a great platform and it's a great tool to have, but that's not the end all be all. If that is taken away tomorrow, what do you have to offer to the world? You know, so you kind of have to think of it that way where it's like, that's just an additional bonus and that's a great platform to have. And I'm not knocking social media down at all because I know I definitely use it for my career, but at the same token, you have to build what you, the life that you want and the job and the career that you want to pursue. So I just, you know, I, the only thing that I guess I would recommend to people is put that time, put that effort in. It is a lot of hard work because if it was easy, then everybody would do it. Right. So right. if you put that in, you will see the outcome sooner than later. Absolutely. Oh my God, such choice words. And I, I think that can be related to any any industry, really. By the way, yeah. um, that's interesting that your boyfriend's from Toronto. We we are based out of Toronto. Oh, are <laughs> that's you? Where I'm speaking no way. to you from. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's talk about your character. I want to kind of get into that now. I just wanted to preface that so people mm-hmm. understand kind of, you know, the lineage and the, you know, the experience you come from before we yeah. kind of roll in a little bit more into the film. So let's talk about your character. What's the purpose of her in the film? You know, rugby is such a testosterone driven sport and it's very rough and rigid. And you can definitely see that in the film, especially in the first half. You know, we we obviously had to establish these boys and where they came from and, you know, what they didn't have or the, the struggles that they had to face in order to even get to the school, forget the championship or the, you know, the, to get to London, but just to come to the school, what they had to face. So, um, mm-hmm. th- it's very heavy, the first half of the film and mm-hmm. it, it's good, but it, it is what it is. And I just felt like there was nothing to kind of lighten that up. There was not no, um, charisma or compassion towards the boys because you have your rugby coach you have you know the school's dean and leader who is dr samantha you have paul walsh again is another coach so you're having all of these men teach boys how to be a good athlete and it's Mm -hmm. always that you know put more work in put the time in lift more run more practice more you know that's what they say so you have all of that but then you don't have that compassionate side where it's like 
where do these boys come from? You know, you don't just mm -hmm. need to teach them something on the field, but you have to continue to be their coach and be that kind of light off the field as well. And so that element was missing. So that's where mm -hmm. Roshni Tucker comes in. And obviously Roshni means light in Hindi. So it just yeah. felt appropriate to name her that. And it was that type of um, element that came into the script in the second half of the film where she lightens the film up and she's like, listen, at the end of the day, they're, they're boys, they're kids. Like they're going to be like this. This is normal. You know, they're not, they're not 20, 30 year old athletes, but you know, they're, they've come from such a hard background and they've gotten here. So let's just acknowledge that and acknowledge that, you know, accomplishment before we're super tough on them. And before we continue to knock them down and, you know, just, be that rough um, rugby coach that most rugby coaches can be. So the Roisin Tucker does bring that lightness to the half part of the film. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because, um, you know, in your personal life, you very much are into sports. You love, you know, that side of your personality. So it's yeah. lovely how this all kind of came full circle in this film. Yeah. I, I want to know, I, I want to know something because, you know, when I was watching this film, it really gave me this feeling of, you know, the the story of Slumdog Millionaire, you know, mm. just how beautifully raw it was told is mm -hmm. how I feel you told the story. Thank it you. was so well, well done. And that really that, that that was my kind of instant feeling that that sense of rawness when, yeah. when you see what they go through, you know. Yeah. I want to ask you based on that, what was the most challenging part of making a film like that? And kind of staying um, in the raw of it, you know, without yeah, commercializing I, it. Yeah, I. you know what? I don't know if the rawness was that hard because we, the boys that are in the film are not actors. They're actual rugby players from the Jungle Crow Association and from Kalinga Institute of Social Sciences. So the reason why we did that was because it's really hard to take an actor and actors have a lot of ego. And I can say that because I'm an actor. So they have their ego. They're like, we're not going to do this. We're not, we don't want to learn this. We don't want to do that. We're actors. This is all we want to focus on. But when you take rugby players and that too, you take kids from underprivileged families or orphans for that matter, they always want to rise and step up to the occasion. Mm -hmm. So that's why we figured it's better to take a rugby player and teach them how to act than take an actor and train them to become a really good athlete in a very short amount of time uh, that we have to prep for this film. So because I think we have those types of elements and we do shoot in the actual location where these kids are based out of, I think that rawness just naturally comes. I don't think it's something that we had to try or really, you know, be um, making a super conscious effort for. It was just, it just happened the way that it was. And if you're recognizing it that way, then that's great. Because yeah. I don't think we even went into it thinking, oh, we need to be raw or, oh, we need to show it like this, this, and this. We just wanted to tell their story at the end of the day. And if that comes across, then, hey, that's a win for us. Absolutely. And it really comes across. And it, it's, the, it's the rawness that uh, connects you to the reality of, of people's yeah. existences, right? And I feel like you really did that well. Thank There's, you. You talked about this um, a little bit earlier, but I wanted to kind of maybe deep dive a little bit mm -hmm. with you Emily there's a larger message with a film it's yeah. you know it's it you know my sense was that it's positioned to create more awareness for the plight and the struggles of the ERISA education system and the underprivileged you know kind of plight of the child population can you share a little bit more about that like am I am I right where I'm saying that or is there something you want to you know maybe add to that because that's the yeah. sense I got with the film like people who didn't know now right. we'll know, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, it's more than just about the kids in Odisha or in Kolkata. I think it's kids throughout India or any underprivileged location or area in the world. Mm -hmm. And that, that's in America too. I'm not just saying third world countries, you know what I mean? And I think that when you do give children a sense of community and belonging, um, whether that's in sports or education or hobbies or whatever the case may be, I think you kind of set them up for success in that way. And I, mm -hmm. I use this, um, this kind of similarity where I say, if you take a seed and you plant it in a small pot, 
it's only going to sm- grow to be a small plant. But if you take it and put it in a big pot, it'll grow to be a very big plant. And mm-hmm. I believe that's the same thing with the kids, because if you take a child and you give them that platform that they should be able to rise up to the occasion to, I mean, any kid is, is the same, you know, they, they mm-hmm. can do whatever they want. They had their world is their oyster. It's just the circumstances that they were grown up in. And, and it could have been me. It, I could have been one of those of children course. in India, any, you know, any one of my friends could have been that I was lucky mm-hmm. enough to have parents that, you know, my dad who migrated to America and I was able to live the American dream and grow up. So privileged compare in comparison to these boys that are part of the film. So I think at the end of the day, it's not just about those kids in Odisha. It's about kids anywhere in the world. Right. And I think the, the bigger message here is that, you know, what we're trying to do is eradicate poverty through sports and education. I love it. It's just incredible. It's, it's quite yes. innovative. Yeah, it's quite innovative in the way that you're doing this. And I want to ask you this. Uh-huh. If, people don't, if people don't get it already, why should people watch the film? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I will say this because at the end of the day, they're, I call them corporations because that's what they are. But these big studios, they watch numbers. And whether that's streaming numbers or whether that's box office numbers, they watch them. And obviously, the more successful something is, the more they're going to create content like that, which is why we're seeing so many remakes happen and why we're seeing franchise films do 10, 15 versions of the same exact film, whether it's Fast and Furious. And I'm not knocking it down because I worked on those sets. But whether it's mm-hmm. Fast and Furious or your Marvel type of superhero films, they're going to continue to make those types of films because that's what the audience is going to watch and that's what they're supporting which rightfully Mm -hmm. so no problem at all but on the same token when they see films like this these true stories Mm -hmm. of unsung heroes do well and they see that the numbers are rising whether that's in box office numbers or streaming numbers and viewership they're going to continue to make these kinds of films and so it's really important for people to support the film and to go and watch it. Like, you know, we release in America today and, and Canada and the UK and people keep asking me, when can I watch it on streaming? And I'm like, don't ask me that because it's in theaters. Go watch it in theaters today. Go support right. it this weekend, next week, whenever you can go support it in theaters, because that's what matters is getting that viewership and, and seeing that, OK, Films like this can do well, and we should continue to make stories that are important like these because these unsung heroes deserve it more than anybody else, more than these larger-than-life franchise films. They deserve it. So that's why you should go watch Jungle Cry in theaters today. <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. It's a great, great answer. What do you Thank think you. people, what do you feel, Emily, people will get out of watching this film? Like, you know, people that have already watched it, um, what, what, what are they saying about the film? that maybe you didn't um, think would be the response. I, I, they're saying what I'm saying at that after they watch it, they're like, yeah, I don't know why more films like this don't get theatrical release and don't get this recognition. And my response is exactly that. It's like, because people want to watch your really large films with a lot of VFX and all this stuff. And they don't want to watch these types of films in theaters. They're waiting for it to come on streaming platforms or that for them to buy it on VOD. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of, you know, they're seeing eye to eye with what I'm saying mm-hmm. and they're seeing the importance of why films like this matter. So I think, you know, my job there is done, but it's getting people to go out and watch these films. That's, that's the thing. Absolutely. And what's the website, um, Emily, for people to go hop on and see where it's playing in their city or, or wherever they may be? I honestly, I think you can just Google Jungle Cry and then your local city and it should be able to come up. But I do know in the US, we use Fandango quite a bit. So if you type in your zip code or your the city that you're closest to, um, you should be able to see what theaters they're playing at and how far they are from you. But uh, UK, I believe, has Odeon and View. And then um, uh, Canada is, is Cineplex, if I'm not mistaken. So if you go on their websites, you can check it out. But yeah, just simply Google your closest metro city jungle cry and they should be able to tell you exactly where it's playing perfect and this is going to be airing the tuesday after the friday that it goes to theater folks please go and support this film it's really really important that you do you you've heard already all the reasons why you should watch it <laughs> take your family take your friends yeah. you know take your co-workers because you know not oftentimes do we get the opportunity to see films this important um 
and your children take them you know that they need to see this stuff we need to be able to yeah. support what's happening around the world because the narrative is not just one today it is multiple emily you're such a pleasure i really enjoyed thank chatting you so with much you. absolutely before i let you go i just want to ask you as you move into your future uh -huh. and you look at your career based on all the experiences that you've had and you, and you think about you know the fact that you know, there's there's a cultural element to to our identities. There's the gender um, element. There's the socioeconomic element. There's mm -hmm. the experiences of you know our generations, our families, as well as those that we're having and the people around us. Yeah. What what would you say people should look at with all this stuff that we're that is going on right now with everybody? You know, like mm -hmm. we're 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 told that all of these things need to matter. So it becomes even more difficult to figure out who you are than it used to be, even mm -hmm. though we do need to have this dialogue. What would you say to people out there, you know, especially as a storyteller, which is essentially what you are, right? What would you say to them to be able to find their purpose-driven life the way that you have? I think you've got to... Um especially in our Desi community, you know, we mm -hmm. do a lot of things for our parents or for our loved ones. But at the end of the day, you have to sleep with yourself and you have to wake up with yourself. Um, and I think you've got to find something that genuinely makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. When you find something that you love doing, it doesn't feel like work. Like this mm -hmm. to me isn't work because I'm talking about what I love and I want people to go watch this film. And it's beyond me being an actress in it or me being an EP on it. It's about the story of the boys. So because I genuinely love what I do, it just never feels like work to me. And I never dread it. I never wake up thinking, oh, I have to go to set or oh, I have to do this interview for this film or anything like that. Um, so you've got to figure out what you love doing. And even mm -hmm. if it means that your parents don't deem it as important or your loved ones don't see the, see the profession that you want or the career that you want the way that you do, doesn't diminish the fact that you love it. Mm -hmm. So I think once you find that and you know, you realize that, okay, this is what I love to do, then that's all that matters to me mm -hmm, or to absolutely. you. That's all that should matter to you at the end of the day. Absolutely. Anything that we've got to look forward to um, coming out of your world? I know you that know, you have this fabulous gin. I can't even believe that <laughs> yeah. someone created a gin based on kind of Ayurvedic philosophy. Like what's yeah. that about? It's so yeah. fascinating. Yeah. So I wanted, I grew up, you know, eating Indian food and my grandma always told me that Indian botanicals and ingredients are like superfoods. And we use them a lot as medicine to treat our body, to treat our mind, to treat our soul. And so mm. I'm not, I'm not claiming that alcohol is good for you or anything of that matter. But what I'm saying is, is that I really wanted to use high premium quality ingredients that come from my tradition and my background. Mm. And so I'm using things like, it does say mango in the back, but it's really amchur. So, which is a uh, right. derived, you know, Amtur is a green mango peel that Indians use in their cooking. It's got this like zesty taste to it. So people are like, oh, I taste orange. And I'm like, no, it's actually the mango because that's <laughs> kind of what Amtur tastes like. Um, yes. So we are using Amtur. We use limda, which is curry leaves, Indian curry leaves. So it's way different than your regular bay leaf that most people use. Um, we use, you know, black cardamom, ginger, turmeric, rose. We use pounds and pounds of saffron, which makes us again, another reason why we're such a high quality and premium uh, type of product. Mm -hmm. But I always tell people that our gin is a gin for people who don't like gin. So mm -hmm. a lot of gins taste very piney and they taste like a Christmas tree for that matter. And Dharma gin is very aromatic. There's, it's not super florally like a perfume and it's not spicy and it's not, you know, overbearing or overpowering. It's just such a unique gin. And I tell people like, I mean, every single one of our customers that buy it, they're like, we can actually sip this me. And I'm like, yeah, I know it's kind of dangerous um, but yeah on the rocks or knee it's, it's some of the best ways to enjoy it because it is so aromatic and it has so many different flavors and profiles it's kind of like Indian cooking there's so many layers to Indian cooking you have like the sweet the spicy the salty a little bit of that you know hing or that little bit of zest to it from the arm tour so it is a replica or uh, yeah a replication of what Indian cooking is like or Indian food is like and traditions are like so I just wanted to bring that to the western world and bring it in a gin which has never been done before Oh my gosh. I don't even know what else to expect from you, sweetheart. It's been such a pleasure talking <laughs> Thank to you. Thank you so Cle much. Clearly you have the, the incredible entrepreneurial gene that us Indians all have, as South Asians all have. <laughs> oh really yeah, wish you for sure. 
I wish you the best of luck. Honestly, I feel there's going to be a lot of wonderful things that are going to come out of your world. Where can people go on social to hang out with you, sweetheart, before I let you go? Yeah, sure. You can go to Emily Shaw Official on Instagram or Real M Shaw on Twitter. So that's where I hang out the most. More active on Instagram. So yeah, send me, you know, comments. I read my comments. I'm pretty active on it, especially right now. I'm trying to answer people that have questions about Jungle Cry or fans or anything like that. And if you go and take your kids to watch Jungle Cry, message me and I will send your kid a video. Oh my God. That is the (laughs) coolest thing ever. You heard it right here on the Anoki and Censored show, guys. Go check out the film Jungle Cry, wherever you are. It's really important that you do. And, you know, like share it tell everyone tell everyone about the film one two three football coach you man mere saath chaloge yeah sir mere paas juta bhi nahi hai school mein admission loge wahan pe khana milega khana rehne ke liye ghar sab i am here to teach you a new game rugby and we're going to make a team to play in the world junior rugby championship so you mean to say that you can train these kids for a world tournament in 4 months they've never heard of rugby they're not aware of this sport how is that even possible catch gora pakda hamara jaan ke piche pad gaya hai ek gore ko hata nahi pade very funny come on boys quick up अगर हम हार गए तो खिलाड़ियों की ऐसी क्यों डरते इस देश के हर बच्चे को ये मौका नहीं मिलता है तुम्हें मिल रहा है आई एम नॉट ऑफरिंग एनी गारंटीज बट वी हैव अ चांस टू ब्रदर वी हैव अ चांस Roshni is managing the Indian team but well, I hope you're a good physio Roshi some big units on my team Maybe it's your physio that should watch out This is your first tournament right Running up my big axe against the tiny little guys must be very demoralizing for them. ये rugby players का पहलवान इतना मैं उखार के फेंक देंगे. Looks like some good competition this year, yeah? खेलने के लायक नहीं. ये तरीका है बात करने का. Sir, मुझे बात ही नहीं करना है. Against all the odds, the Jungle Cats, young group of men from India. Remember Jungle Cats, Mariba, Kiriba. We're going to stick to the plan. Use your skill, use your speed. Mariba, Kiriba. To yehi baat yaad rakhi. Tum kahan se aaye ho aur kahan tak aa chuke ho? Mariba, Kiriba. Mariba, Kiriba. Mariba, Kiriba. Mariba, Kiriba. Sweetheart, I adore you. You are wonderful. Please come back. Thank on. you. Thank you so much. For sure, I will. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. And guys, Thanks. I'll see you next week. <laughs>